New findings from the United Nations offer a grim assessment of how off track the world is in combating climate change. The UN's annual emissions gap reports that it takes a, a look at the difference between the world's current path and the changes needed to meet the goals of the 2015 Paris Climate Accord. The 2019 report says that global temperatures are on pace to rise as much as 3.2 degrees Celsius by the end of the century. It also says that G20 nations account for 78 percent of all emissions, while 15 members still have not committed to a timeline for net zero emissions. Overall, the report warns that transformations and actions must be taken now. Well, the U.N. Secretary General says failure to heed these warnings and take drastic action to reverse emissions means we're going to continue to witness deadly and catastrophic heat waves, storms and pollution. CBS News climate change and weather contributor Jeff Baradelli joins me now. You know, Jeff, we get so many of these reports, yeah. right? So many of them. But how is this one different? Is it different? It's not very different. But each report is more dire than the one before because we refuse to take the serious measures that we need to take to rein in our carbon dioxide emissions. They continue to go up despite the fact that we have to increase our ambition on reducing emissions. In fact, if we want to make our goal of only allowing temperatures to go up 1.5 to 2 degrees Celsius, which, by the way, is around three to four degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, we need to increase our ambition. When I say that, I mean the whole globe and all the nations by around three to five times. So we had a certain ambition that we laid out. All the countries kind of um, gave these, these pledges to the world and said, we're going to reduce our emissions by such and such. They did that in 2015. We do that again in 2020. And we need literally three to five times the ambition. So ambitious mm pledges that are three to five times better than they were before in order to reach our goals. That seems like an extraordinarily daunting task. When you talk about those goals, the the, the world sort of increasing temperature a degree or two, how yeah. does that really affect the planet? Where do you see those changes? It's a huge deal. So right now we're looking at the temperature going up around three plus degrees wow. Celsius. Fahrenheit is five degrees. So picture your body temperature going from 99 to 104 degrees. Mm. That's how sensitive the Earth system is. Everything is interconnected. Everything starts to break down. Mm -hmm. One thing we're virtually certain of is almost all coral reefs are going to be wiped out within the next 30 years. There won't be much left. And that is kind of the bottom of the food chain and the bottom of the survival chain for many species. 25% of ocean species count on coral reefs. But there's a lot more effects more extreme wildfires, more mm -hmm. extreme heat waves. Certain parts of the globe become uninhabitable. Mm -hmm. Areas that, you know, are, are turning into deserts turn completely into deserts. You can't grow food there anymore. People end up migrating away because they have no livelihood anymore. All of a sudden you have migration crises. So this kind of spirals out of control if we don't rein in our carbon dioxide emissions. Mm. So what do you think ultimately could be done to reduce our dependence on fossil fuel and also reduce our emissions at this point. Well, here's where the good news is. Uh, you know, sustainable energy is there. Renewable energy is finally mm. there to the point where it is cheaper in many cases than fossil fuels. Uh, the technology is there, just like buying a big screen television, mm. right? It starts out costing you $5,000. Now you can get one of these right here for, you know, a couple hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's the deal with, with, with sustainable energy is it's a technology, it's not a commodity. And so the prices are going down dramatically. But here's the best part. For every unit of energy that you have to create, electricity-wise, you may need one fossil fuel worker, but you need a few uh, workers in sustainable energy. So it creates tons of jobs. So mm. as we begin to, cre uh, to uh, combat climate change, we have absolutely no choice but to change a lot of the ways that we do stuff. And in doing so, we manufacture new industries and create tons of jobs and economic development, but in a sustainable way. Mm -hmm. So believe it or not, this could be a rebirth of American ingenuity and a new ingenuity all over the world by actually going after and tackling climate change. So this is a good news story if we do it the right way. So the United Nations is going to meet in Madrid next week. Um, what's your sense on this meeting? What do you think could really, what do these leaders hope to accomplish ultimately? Well, it's difficult because the United States is out, right? Uh, President Donald Trump took us out of the Paris Climate Accord. We're not officially out. We won't be officially out until literally, I think, the day after the 2020 election. Wow. So it's conceivable that if he's not reelected that we could be back in. Mm -hmm. But with that said, you know, I think that 
hopes are fairly low to accomplish much because we need the United States to be a part of it. Uh, China's actually going kind of in the opposite direction right now. They've decreased their um, investment in renewable energy hmm. because they're between policy cycles right now. But the one thing that they really want to accomplish is try to motivate folks for next year. Next year, 2020 is important because in 2020, the countries come to the table with their new pledges. Mm. You know, what are they pledging in terms of uh, curbing their carbon dioxide emissions? Will we see more ambition to kind of ratchet up mm. those pledges to decreasing carbon dioxide emissions? That happens in 2020. So this is the year they want to get everybody jazzed up and they're hoping to, uh, you know, uh, accomplish that this year so that next year it's a little bit easier. We'll see what happens. Mm. Such an important issue. Jeff Baradelli, thank you very much for You're joining welcome. us.